Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I trust everyone is safe and well. Welcome to today's Civil Designer Open Classroom. Wednesdays are Roads Day, and today we welcome back Cameron Boyle. As always, please feel free to use the text chat service on the GoToWebinar floating app to ask us any questions you may have during Cameron's presentation. So, good afternoon, Cameron. Please take it away. Thank you very much, Charles. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us in today's Open Classroom. We've shown you lots of videos on the different aspects of design, but we haven't really focused on how you actually do a road design. So how would you go about doing the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment? Hence, we've put this together so you can see the different options available to you. First of all, I'm then going to turn off all the roads and then I'll focus in on the highway design. So I'm going to select hidden and then we'll look at this highway design over here. Before you do a road design, you would want to go to the roads mode. You go to file, select road file. Here you go and specify which road you want to design. Let's use this option over here and go and select the control panel. We've given it a name and you can go and specify which option you'd like to generate your road design as. If for instance, you do design it as a cross section, it's very easy for civil designer to convert it into a strings design and vice versa. You go and specify which template to use and we've already done a webinar on templates. So look out for it on our YouTube channel. Civil designer then picks up the dimensions from your template and populates the information at the bottom here. You can again simply go and click on these browse buttons, go and select which curbs you'd like to use and go and see what they look like. If you'd like to use the TR817 design criteria, it is built into our program by default. Alternatively, you can go and select your own design criteria, make changes to it and go and save it. If civil designer picks up that your design is not according to the standard, it will serve you as a warning. But at the end of the day, you still have final say as to what your design must look like. You've got 128 different road layers that you can use during the design process. And you can go and specify which settings to use on your road. And it's very easy just to go and make changes to these settings. It's no predetermined styles that you need to go and change. Now what I've done beforehand is I've gone and put in a CAD polyline and I'm going to use this CAD polyline to design the road. Zooming into the design to see the CAD polyline and there it is. I do so by going to alignment just to show you that the design files are empty at this stage. I then go to alignment, regression, extract alignments. You can use this function to design a single as well as a dual carriageway. You could specify to pick up the horizontal alignment from the CAD line, to pick up the vertical alignment, and that would be from the survey. You could go and specify which settings to use. At the same time, you could also go and pick up the super elevation as well as the road edges from your CAD. At the bottom, you go and specify the offsets to extract the elements from. And then you click on CAD entities and go and click on that center line. Because my road expert is turned on, Civil Designer will guide me through the design process. I just need to go and specify which parameters would be most applicable to the particular design. Here I'm extracting every 20 meters on straights and every 10 meters on curves. I'm going to extract cross sections 20 meters to the left and the right of the center line. Specify which surface you're working with. So this would be the existing ground and then specify on which road layer you would like to extract the ground level onto. These are the 128 different road layers I mentioned earlier. 
Now it's going to go through the design process. It's looking at the horizontal as well as the vertical alignment. It's asking me if I'd like to pick up the pivot lines from my CAD entities. I'm going to say no. It's looking at the vertical alignment. Where would I like the results? Screen output. Click on OK. So it's completing the design, it's generating my edge levels. And that would then be the road design. If I go back to alignment and I go and select horizontal edit alignment, there you can see it's picked up my PI points from the CAD line. Just to focus in on the horizontal alignment, if I go to window and select tile project vertical, Zooming in to PI1, looking at different ways of making changes. If I go to alignment horizontal, you could become more familiar with these keyboard shortcuts, but in my case, I'm going to select graphical edit. Clicking on PI1, I could go and make changes to my design over here. And in that case, not only would it update my drawing, but if I go to the spreadsheet, you'll see that it also updates that information. Alternatively, if I prefer to just work on the spreadsheet, I could go and make changes here. And that would then update things graphically over here. Another option is to go to alignment. And as an example, go and select graphical move. Click on the PI point and go and make changes to it. So while I go and make changes to that, that information, if you look at the coordinates on the spreadsheet, would then also go and dynamically update. Another very powerful function worthwhile mentioning, because not a lot of software can do this, is the option to go and insert PIs at any point inside your alignment. So as an example, if I go to alignment and I go and select graphical insert, go and specify where you want your new PI point to be, go and give it a different name and specify in what sequence you want it. So this will be PI1 after the start point. Specify my curve radius and click on OK. Having done that, you will see that the spreadsheet has been updated. And of course, another option, if somebody's already done the design for me, I'm able to then just right click, select read CSV file, and go and specify which CSV file to read. Happy with that, I can then go and close it and save it. Civil Designer would then go through the design again using the new horizontal alignment information. Looking at the vertical alignment, if we go back to alignment, vertical, edit alignment, this is the information that Civil Designer picked up from the regression functionality. If I go to Window, Tile Project Horizontal. As I move my cursor in the long section, you'll see there's a cross in the plan view to give me a good indication as to where I am in my road. If I go and make this bigger, and zoom into the vertical alignment design, as an example, looking at VPI number 11. If I go and right click, go and select Edit PI, you could then go and update the design over here. And in a similar manner, you could go and right click and select Delete PI.
And of course, always nice to go and right click and go and select Move PI. So you could move that up and down. You could go and press G on the keyboard to jump to your ground line. Alternatively, if you prefer to go to the spreadsheet route, here you can go and change any value and you could go and specify an elevation and a length. Once again, if somebody has already done the design and you'd like to import it, you could simply go and right click, select Read CSV. And because I'm looking at the left hand side of the dual carriageway, go and select the appropriate spreadsheet. Same thing applies to the right hand side. If I go to graphical view, you can see what it looks like. And once again, you could go and make changes to your design. Closing the vertical alignment and regenerating. Looking at the super elevation, if I were to go to alignment, design criteria, you could go and specify design speed, let's say 100 kilometers per hour. And looking at the super elevation, you could then go and specify which settings to use. At the bottom right hand side, you could go and specify your cross for grades. Look at the different super settings, specify which formula to use. And as you go and select the diagram, you'll see which options are available to you. Click on OK, go to your super graph to view your super elevation rates. Click on OK. Now when you go to alignment, edge levels, edit super, currently that is my cross for grades. If I were to go back to alignment, edge levels, slave super, the super elevation design would be slaved according to the horizontal alignment. You can treat the curves individually. Alternatively, you could click on recalculate all and civil designer would go through the super elevation design process and give you a message of any warnings. You are still able to go and click on these figures and go and make changes. Alternatively, if you go to the graphical view, you can view your super elevation from the side view. Over here, if you go and right click, we give you the options to insert points, edit points. If I go and select edit point and click on a point, there I can pick up what my grades are. Alternatively, if somebody has already designed it for me, I'm able to simply right click again, select read CSV file and go and select my super elevation. Then lastly, looking at the widths of my road. At the bottom, if you look at my diagram, I'm able to go and right click and select lane widening, specify where I want to start and end. You could go and round your change values off Specify your additional lane width, put in a start and an end transition. And specify you want to apply to the left lane shoulder side. That would then dynamically go and update this diagram. Alternatively, you could go to the spreadsheet, go and specify widths. You could go and right click here and go and insert rows and put in your own additional information. And also very nice is to be able to go and do things graphically instead. If I go to alignment, go to edge levels, there's an option to insert your edge width as well as delete it. That would then dynamically go and update the spreadsheet. In this case, once again, I'm just going to go and right click and select to read CSV file and select the final width design. If I go to templates, I can go and update my template design. You could go and specify if you've got additional templates, 
where you'd like to make changes. Using these files, Civil Designer will redesign my road for me. And that, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is the different design options when doing a road design. Just looking at the cross section over here, pressing page down, you could go and browse through the different cross sections. And if need be, go to your component editor and go and make changes over here. I hope this will guide you through the design process. Please let us know if you've got any additional questions. Until next week, cheers for now. Back to you, Charles. Cheers, Cameron. That was great. And thank you to all who attended today. Please join us tomorrow at the same time and place using the same link where Chris will be working in the sewer module. Thank you and goodbye for now.